What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel another video. I just got off work and I wanted to get busy painting. So let me tell you what we're doing. It's kind of special. I put a community post out recently and I've been busy scripting videos for y'all and all the ideas you're giving me. They're great ideas. One comment asked me to paint with only craft paints. So that's what we're doing today. So these names of these paints are kind of crazy. So we got Pacific Coast, which is like a cyan. We have a neon scorching yellow. We have a Juneberry, which is kind of a magenta color. And then we have this color shift, white flash. So all of these were bought at Walmart. And then the base coat is gonna be this folk art wicker white. Um, so I mixed these also with a glue medium. So I'm trying to make this completely budget friendly. The glue medium was mixed at 75% uh, glue, 25% water. Yes. And I did add some silicone to the colors. Now the base coat has no silicone in it. And we are going to be using this star cookie cutter on this 12 by 12 canvas here. I'm super curious about like the results we're going to get. I think it's going to be amazing, but let's get down there. Let's get started. Let's do this. How is everybody doing today? I hope everybody's doing amazing. Now I was a little wary at first. I didn't know how well that these colors were going to be together. Because I know that cyan, magenta, and yellow was a color palette that I wanted to use. And the main reason is because they do mix very well and create beautiful colors. But if I overmix them, we can get a whole bunch of nastiness. So it's kind of like a personal challenge-ish. Now, I will say, when I was mixing up these craft paints, all of them were completely different consistencies. So it was very difficult to get them close to the same. So that's 75% water to 20, or correction, 75% glue to 25% water will have to be adjusted depending on the brand of paint that you're using. Because all the brands have slightly different variations of how thick they are. I have no idea why it's that way. Maybe some colors are just more dense than others, and that's a good possibility. But, yeah, so I had to kind of adjust some of my stuff to make sure that the colors were the same consistency. Because if I go to pour this, and the colors are drastically different consistencies, when it dries, the thinner layers are going to dry faster, and the thicker layers are going to dry slower. And that causes all kinds of cracking and crazing during the drying process. So if you're getting a whole bunch of cracking and crazing and you don't understand why, more than likely that is the culprit, y'all. It's because something in your paints, the thickness, the consistency isn't the same. A lot of the time that happens when your base coat is a lot thinner than the paints that you're putting over the top. Because that base coat will dry a lot faster as it was. I keep getting them mixed. The top coat is thinner. <laughs> Forgive me, y'all. That happens a lot when the top coat is thinner and the base coat is thicker because the top coat dries and then when the bottom coat dries underneath afterwards, it pulls those paint layers apart and makes it crack. Now I am noticing with this glue medium, it was fairly thin. I'm not getting much for cells right now. That's a drip. We're not gonna count that as a cell. And that might be okay. We might not need to get cells. I do love my cells, but if they're gonna be stubborn today, then we're, we're gonna be just fine without them. I'm loving some of the colors that I'm seeing already. I'm already seeing some really interesting greens and some oranges, even a little bit of red. So very excited about this. Now 
let's see if I can do anything with the heat gun. I have a lot of bubbles in this, but I want to see if we can kind of bring anything to life in this painting so far. Now some of these cells are starting to come up. We're not getting a whole lot in the way of cells, but we are getting some. I am noticing the craft paints are kind of, they're not um, playing as well with each other as I would like. The cells aren't really, really round. They got kind of a strange shape to them. And that's okay, we got a lot of light going on, so let's bring a little bit of dark to it. Add a little bit of contrast. So how's everybody doing? I hope everybody's doing great. Like I was saying, I just got off work. I've been super excited my entire shift to come home and paint because this video sounded really exciting because it's craft paints and I know that like the way the world is nowadays, everything is so expensive. And this hobby is a very expensive hobby to have. So I wanted to kind of try painting with some craft paints to show you guys that you can create something really beautiful with just craft paints. You don't have to break the bank to go buy really professional mediums and professional painting supplies. You can do it just from the comfort of your own home with what you have. You can even go to Walmart, buy a couple dollars worth of paint, maybe at most eight dollars for a few colors, a bottle of school, or not school glue, but glue all, and come home, mix up your own medium, and pour on anything. It doesn't even have to be a canvas. You could pour on a cardboard container. I've heard uh, a lot of my viewers are pouring when they're just doing tests and practice on like empty pizza boxes, or even the document protector sheets. It all definitely works. Now, so we don't get so much rolling under, I do want to add some white. I'm really liking the way these colors are kind of mixing and creating some really brilliant greens. I've got some darker blues. That magenta is really coming in strong. I'm very happy with, with what I'm seeing right now. If you're enjoying this video and want to see more videos like this in the future, do me a favor and tap like on this video because it really helps me out. Thank you so much. I also have a video coming out. There was another viewer request. Quite a few of you wanted to know where I got my beginning from as far as acrylic pouring and whatever drove me to start painting and, and doing this art form to begin with. So for the last few days I've been trying really hard to get that out to you guys. It's just it's a very difficult topic for me to talk about and I feel like a lot of artists find themselves through traumatic experiences in their lives and I know that that's how I found mine so I've been trying to find a way to share that with you guys and try to connect with you on that level because there's a lot of bad in this world and I don't ever want to be somebody that puts any more of it into the world if you know what I'm saying but I feel like I could relate to quite a few of you And I felt like it might be important to kind of put my perspective out there so that everybody knows that they're not alone. Because I know for a long time in my life, I felt alone. I felt like I was doing it on my own and it had to work. And that's just not a good feeling, guys. But made it through that difficult time in my life and if I can help any of you make it through any difficulties that you're going through 
that makes all the time that I spend doing this kind of stuff worth it. Oh man, I just put a big old drip right there. But you know what, we're gonna leave it. And I will swipe through that later if we need to. But look at these colors though. The colors that are coming out of here are gorgeous. All right, so another hit with the heat gun. It's gonna help me pop some bubbles. Expose a little bit more of that layering we got going on. It almost makes kind of a floral pattern and I'm liking it. I'm liking it a lot, y'all. Now, with this glue medium, I'm noticing that it's having more of a difficult time for the colors to actually churn through. Because sometimes I like to have them churn. There you go, it churned a little bit. I like to have it churn so those colors can kind of combine and create beautiful gradients of both color. There you go, we're getting a little bit. But yeah, look at these colors, y'all. Gorgeous. I'm in love. Beautiful. At least a little bit. At least a little bit more. Want to add a little bit more yellow to it. Just a little bit. This is beautiful, you guys. Let's see. Want some more aqua? And I want to get that pearlescent like white in there, that white flash. Yeah, guys. This is working out great. So yeah, the craft paints, they're not giving me as much of a hassle. Like, I was worried that them being craft paints and more inexpensive, that the colors wouldn't hold up very well. But it seems to me that the colors are holding up pretty well, actually, considering Considering that there's no professional products in this at all. It's a homemade glue medium. So let me make some thin layers because we're getting towards the center and I want to be able to swipe through it without having a big blob of a certain color in the middle. All right, guys. I want a tiny little pop of this white flash. Pop it off just a tiny drop of this yellow. Smallest amount. Man, I'm loving this, y'all. These colors are just going together really well. It's very exciting. All right. So we'll release as much as we can. We'll swipe through. There we go. Created like a rainbow right there. That's freaking gorgeous, y'all. Now let's pop any of the air bubbles left. Start generating some of these cells. Now this process with the cells, all I'm doing is heating up the surface of the paint. It's radi uh, radiating through the different layers and helping expose some of that silicone. It's kind of coaxing it through the different layers, punching through, and making those cells happen. But this is fantastic, y'all, I love this. Like, these colors are amazing. All right. Beautiful. Let's get a lot of white down so we have plenty of paint for these colors to slide on. 
And if you notice, that purple drop that I dripped earlier on accident kind of blends in. I'm not even sure exactly where it is. I think that's it, but the jury's out on that one. I'm not entirely sure, to be honest. So let me spread this out to the corners just a little. Try to get the canvas wet so it has a surface to slide on there. Because it doesn't look like it, but we still have a decent amount of paint in the middle. So once we spread it, we should have plenty of coverage, definitely. All right, so paint is spread. You pop a little bit more bubbles. Because that stick kind of introduced a whole lot more bubbles than I wanted. Alright, let me do a minor adjustment here, not too much. And then we're going to spin it once that way, spin it once this way, and see what happens. Ooh! Hot dang. Look at that. Okay. <laughs> I'm so much in love with this, I don't even, I don't want to move it, but... I have these two corners that are white, and I kind of want to spin it just a little bit more. Come on, white, go away. It's starting to go, it's starting to go, it's almost gone. Almost. And we can deal with just a little bit. This looks so good. Wow. This is better than I would have just expected with, you know, normal paint. Look at this gorgeous lacing of that yellow going all the way through there. Wow. All right, so pop these air bubbles. I don't think we're gonna get much more cell development. We might get a little. But this is for just any other air bubbles. Holy heck. This is so freaking pretty, y'all. Okay, I love, love, love. Like, I am completely blown away by how Craft Paints did this with a school or a glue all medium. There's no premium compounds in this at all. Anybody could do this. Let's get down there and check this thing out because this thing is doing some really awesome stuff. Look at the crazy little cells that are in this. Those three colors together mixed so well. They played really nice together. Got this really wicked yellow lacing. Then all these subtle transitions of color then that center that's just a big pop of bright color in your face i love this one you guys if you want to watch another video just like this click the screen right now and i'll see you there